Hello and welcome to How Football Works, where we break down the ins and outs of the business side of the beautiful game. I'm Ollie Clink. Great to have you along. We have a jam-packed show in store for you today. We'll reveal how much each Premier League manager earns per year. And there's a couple of surprises, including a manager in the relegation zone who's earning more than Chelsea's Enzo Maresca will reveal who that is. We'll also talk about Everton's proposed takeover. Will it be a new dawn at Goodison Park? And what big decisions need to be made? And are Hashtag United a bigger fairy tale story than Wrexham? All of that to come. Joining me today in the studio is the founder and CEO of Hashtag United, Spencer Owen, uh, the senior football news reporter at The Athletic, Matt Slater. And also joining us to discuss Everton is the former CEO of the club, Keith Wyness. Gentlemen, it's absolutely uh, brilliant to have you all along. Let's get straight into the biggest story of the week, uh, which is that Everton have finally agreed a takeover for the club. The Freakin Group, which also owns the Italian side Roma, are in advanced talks to take a 94% stake in the club. So is this good news for Everton fans? or just the beginning of another saga. Uh, Keith, I want to start with you as uh, one of the former CEOs of the club. What are your initial thoughts about the Friedkin Group coming in? Look, I've been uh, living this whole deal for the last two or three years in terms of helping, trying to help with sta stadium funding, uh, different issues. And as it came to this sort of timing, the Friedkin Group certainly became the favourite, in my opinion. Uh, I've done a lot of research around them in Roma. And while there are some issues that still we need to watch for, uh, I think the way that they're approaching the financial side of the club uh, and getting some stability back is crucial. They'll, they'll certainly have the stadium finished and be in there for uh, for next season. So overall, it's it's very big with a couple of little caveats. Matt, we know that Everton fans have been here before. Would it be right for them to err on the side of caution or does this deal look a lot closer than some of the ones we've seen before with 777. Even the free King Coop before have come in uh, with, a, with a deal and that, that didn't quite work out. What about this time around? Yeah, look, I, I would always advise a degree of caution because it's not done yet. This is pending regulatory approval. So that's approval from the FA, the Financial Conduct Authority. Those two are kind of box ticking exercises. I don't think there's going to be any problems there. And then the most important one is from the Premier League itself. Um, all of that said, I think this this is it. This is going to happen. As you say, the Freakins had a look in June, got into exclusive talks with Everton's owner, Farhad Mashuri, and they walked away from those talks about a month later. They had a couple of legal concerns. Now, in terms of what's changed, I think maybe their appetite for risk has slightly changed. Maybe they were slightly spooked by the very public interest of Crystal Palace co-owner John Texter. And I also think, crucially, one of those legal signs, the most important, was some of the mess left behind by 777. And in particular, this very controversial £200 million debt that has become even more controversial because 777 have just basically imploded and are being sued in the US. So there were concerns around that loan. I think they've done a deal that has made this, this bigger agreement with for Everton pretty smooth now. So I think they'll be in place by mid-December, perhaps even earlier, because Dan Freakin, as, as you've already mentioned, owns AS Roma. He's on UEFA club committees. He's a senior figure within European Club Association. They also own a club in France. So they've been through two regulatory processes there. He is a very wealthy man. He's worth $10 billion. They have a the, the Freakin group make most of their money from selling Toyotas in the south of the US. Uh, big company. They've got big interest in films, property, travel. So this is a very significant family business with experience of running a big football club in Italy. So I don't think there's any problems. Mm. Now, if this deal does go through, of course, there are some big decisions to be made. And Spencer, I do want your views on this in just a moment. but. Keith, when I looked at the, this proposed deal, it feels quite similar in some ways to the Newcastle takeover that we saw uh, a few years ago now. Similar time in the season. And when those owners came in, they got rid of Steve Bruce, they brought in Eddie Howe, they invested quite a lot in January. When you look at where Everton are at the moment, 
If you were coming in as this new CEO, do you think action like that could be taken, should be taken? I think it's going to be difficult to see a dramatic change, partly because of the PSR uh, situation as well with Everton right now. And I think they're going to be pretty close to that. So there may not be big leeway in terms of spending. Uh, but also, I think the new stadium project coming through next season means that you know, staying in the Premier League is imperative. And so they will probably be thinking, whatever we have to do to stabilise and to get things moving uh, for this season... Uh, and stay in the Premier League. That's what we have to do, rather than make dramatic changes just yet. Spencer, do you go along with that, with what Keith's saying there about, you know, no stick or twist, you know, you've got to stick with Deitch for the moment? I think it's the obvious, you know, obvious option, at least in, at least until the January transfer window, right? Because they can't impact that squad mm. before then, and that is very much a, a Sean Deitch squad for me. I don't think you're going to get another manager come in, necessarily get more out of that particular squad at this point in time. Um, you know, when it comes to the financial situation, I think Jared Branthwaite is probably the name that, that is there to be capitalised on if they wanted to bring some money and allow them to rebuild that squad in the image of a new manager if they should go down that route. But no, I totally agree. Like the stadium is such a big moment for the club, you know, as, as, a, as a West Ham fan who's gone through something similar with our club, um, you want to get that bit right. And there was a lot of talk about it when we went to the London stadium. You know, can you imagine them playing in that stadium in the championship? And it looks like it could happen for, for a small period of time. So likewise with Everton, a very different deal, of course. You know, we, everyone knows the finances of the West Ham stadium deal and how kind of favourable they were for West Ham. Um, but yeah, you, you can't afford to do that. So whatever the, the, the freaking group want to achieve long term, I think they need to probably just make this a peaceful transition. Mm, I do want to pick your brain about the whole stadium move as well, as a, as a fan that has experienced that in just a moment. But uh, Keith, we know that you've got a, a, you know some contacts at, at Roma, where the freaking group have been uh, running the club. They've had some success. They've seen the club uh, win a European trophy, but they've also made some decisions that some fans have been pretty angry about. They sacked Jose Mourinho, who was a huge favourite, despite the fact that the form was dropping off. Uh, they also got rid of Daniel De Rossi after just four games as manager as well. Do they need to be careful about what they do in their initial days of ownership if this deal does come through? Yeah, absolutely. I think when they first came in, uh, I did quite a bit of checking at that time and things looked pretty good. I mean, they'd done some great stuff about getting the fans back involved at the club. But recently, just you know, in the last since the start of the season, uh, the CEO resigned last weekend, uh, and it's all over the De Rossi situation. And it seems to be, uh, it's a lack of emotional understanding of the club's fabric. I mean, De Rossi is such an icon in that club, and I don't think there was a full understanding of really what would happen if he was going to be sacked after having a decent season last year, and also just signing a new contract. Uh, so it's it's difficult for a new owner coming in another you know, from another country to understand that emotional fabric. Now at Everton there is a similar situation. We just went through the whole thing with Graham Sharp uh, almost not being able to come to Goodison because of the fan protests. Uh, perhaps not quite as extreme as we've seen with the Curva sued guys in Roma, but nevertheless there has to be an understanding of the fabric of Everton and the understanding of the emotional side. And that's what they've got to spend some time understanding. And if they do that, they'll do well. You mentioned Newcastle earlier. I thought Amanda Stavey did a good job of that at the start, of actually taking some time before making big decisions. They'll be well served if they can do that again. Matt, do you think any of those decisions at Roma, do they provide any warning signs for Everton fans or do you see it as a completely different project and, and situation? No, I think there are lessons, very clear lessons. So... They started pretty well at, at Roma. They certainly threw money around and they've made two European finals. Um, they're actually ranked fifth in Europe in terms of the European club coefficient. So they're doing pretty well in that regard. But they've had some mistakes, right? They've made some, they've made some missteps. Uh, I think they probably overpaid for Mourinho. I don't think that was quite the, quite the hire that they, they hoped. Um, the De Rossi situation was interesting. They were really struggling and they brought the hero back. But then... They probably unnecessarily gave him a really long contract this summer without really thinking it through. Four games into the season, they sack him. It's 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 not great. And it looks like the CEO has carried the can for that. She was very highly rated, Lena Soloka. She's she's you know considered to be a really, really good operator. So that was a strange decision. But the big problem they've had at Rome and Roma, and it's the same one they inherited from a former American owner called Jim Palotta, 
is the stadium, ironically. So, you know, it's funny that they're, we're talking about Everton, who are, of course, moving into this expensive, but really, really fantastic looking new stadium. That's kind of what they want in the Eternal City. That has been the big, big problem. They've struggled to qualify for Champions League. That's the first thing. But this finishing the stadium, getting the stadium started, actually, is the, is the real issue there. It's very hard to build stuff. Uh, in Italy, there's lots of bureaucracy. Incredibly difficult to build things in Rome. There's a lot of old stuff under the ground. So that has been their problem. Mm. Just on the stadium move, I want to bring you in on this, Spencer, because as we mentioned before, your club, West Ham, have gone through this. It took them a while to get comfortable at the London Stadium, maybe even arguably a, a few fans still, uh, you know, not overly happy about that move. But is this a different situation for, for Everton? And, and how do you look back on the move now after, after you've been there for a number of years? Yeah, I think it was really like a sort of philosophical question as to what sort of football fan you are, really, as to how you felt about uh, the West Ham move. And, you know, there was uh, a lot of factors to it. And I think if you look at it purely from a business standpoint and what, you know, we're sort of discussing here today, like it's a very good deal, right, for a club. And that's why a lot of people weren't happy about it outside of West Ham, I would suggest. Um, it, again, maybe biased, but it probably made the most sense for us in terms of catchment area. And, you know, I know Tottenham were interested in it at one point, but they've obviously gone and developed a completely state-of-the-art stadium. Um, but it isn't the same, clearly. You've got the distance, obviously, with the running track, which is part and parcel of, of that stadium as an, it's still an, you know, an Olympic uh, venue. Um, but it, it has kicked us on. Since we've done that, you can't argue with the fact that, you know, we have won a European trophy. You know, we have somewhat stabilised, I would say, in the Premier League. And be careful, because you never get too comfortable as a West Ham fan, right? <laughs> but um, you, you can't really argue with the, the sort of facts that have happened since then. Does it feel the same? No, I, I, I probably prefer the experience as a fan of going to the bowling ground and that kind of much more intimate, closer to the pitch feel. I don't think you can get away from that. But they're operating in a league which is incredibly expensive and you have to use all the tools to your ex disposal to compete. I think that's what the owners have done. I think they have massively increased the value of our club as a result of that move. I think we've started to now see some developments in terms of, of transfer policy and, and people like Tim Stuyton coming in and, and be able to attract a certain level of player. So it all, it, for me, I was always kind of saw the negative association with it, but I ultimately thought it was a good move for the club. Maybe that's because... You know, I run my own club and I can sort of see how good an opportunity it can be to get these. And to, to, to look that gift horse in the mouth and not take them on the stadium, I think would have been crazy. Having said that, this is a very different scenario, obviously, as you, as you mentioned with Everton. But equally, it's something that they're all doing right now. Look at the amount of Premier League teams that have built new grounds in the last sort of decade or so. Um, and you, Arsenal probably is a great example. And they're now finally reaping the benefits of that move. They had to be really sensible financially for a long period of time post that. And Arsene Wenger probably got more stick than he deserved on the football side because of the, the way he actually was having to operate and how hamstrung he was budgetarily because of that move. But he's, you know, he's actually just uh, transitioned that club into a new era. And now they're, they have been spending money in the last few years. They have kicked on and have improved. So I think Everton fans, they will be the first to remind you that they're a massive club, right? And now maybe this is the move that can help them get back to where they were in, in yesteryear and, and towards the top end of the table again. Keith, uh, just before we let you go, I've got one more question for you on this because I know you've said already that right now keeping Sean Dyche would be the right decision for these proposed new owners. But if the poor form were to continue and a, a change did need to be made, one of the names uh, on the list and, and one name talked about a lot is a man that you work with at the club, David Moyes. How high should he be on the list of these new owners were they to make a change? Well, it's always difficult in football to go back. Uh, <laughs> even though, yes, David and I probably had the most successful period in Everton's history this century, uh, which we were obviously very proud of, uh, it would be difficult to go back. And I think that may be a mistake. I think with a new new owner, new vision, I think it's time to move forward. Uh, but listen, it's not the worst option by any means, but I think it, it, there might be some need to try and move forward and have a fresh start in a new stadium. Well, Keith, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Keith Wyness there, and we'll see how that all plays out for Everton as well.